I've been looking forward to doing this story for a long time. Okay, ready? Behold, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, Volume 4. This book is super boring looking and also super important. The DSM, they call it. It is the reference that psychiatrists and therapists and insurance companies and drug companies all consult when they decide if you have a mental disorder. So did your insurance company kick in to help cover the cost of you going to therapy or your antidepressants? Uh, if so, this book and your diagnosis based on what's in this book is part of why. Uh, and it has a big cultural impact beyond medicine. A big part of how we define as a culture what counts as a sickness, what counts as a mental disorder, is framed by what's in the DSM. That's why it was a big deal in 1973 when the American Psychiatric Association decided that homosexuality no longer constituted a psychiatric disorder. They delisted it as a psychiatric disorder in the DSM. For decades, basically forever, psychiatrists had, with this book, said if you're gay, you're sick. You have a medical ailment, a mental disorder. There is something wrong with you. And so in 1973, when psychiatrists moved to change that, it caused a lot of controversy. One of the prime movers behind that change was this man, Dr. Robert L. Spitzer, a Columbia University professor and psychiatrist who worked on revising the DSM that year. In 1973, he argued for taking being gay off the list of mental illnesses by saying, quote, many homosexuals are satisfied with their sexual orientation and demonstrate no generalized impairment. It does not sound revolutionary now, but it, it was back then. Among the people rocked by this change in the DSM was an industry that claimed to be able to heal gay people of their supposed illness. Suddenly, these folks are being told by the American Psychiatric Association, hey, you are trying to heal people who aren't sick. The anti-gay, we can cure you folks did stick around for years, for decades even, but Frankly, they were on the fringes of quackery, of pseudo-religious, pseudo-medical, anti-gay politics. Until something crazy happened. In 2001, this came out. Can some gay men and lesbians change their sexual orientation? This was not published in some quack, fringe, wishful thinking, anti-gay publication. It was not a vanity publishing thing. This was published in a well-regarded, peer-reviewed medical journal called the Archives of Sexual Behavior. And this piece was not published by some anti-gay true believer who was trying and failing to pull on the guise of scientific authority to just justify being super anti-gay. Look at the author of this. Look, Robert L. Spitzer. That would be the same Dr. Robert L. Spitzer, who had been so instrumental in delisting homosexuality as a mental disorder in 1973. In 2001, 28 years after Dr. Spitzer told the country that being gay doesn't make you sick, he published this. This study, which says he studied a couple hundred patients and he found that you could, in some instances, pray away the gay. You could get rid of your homosexuality through therapy or something. He said some gay people essentially could be turned straight. The anti-gay groups, the being gay is a choice people, the you can be cured of your homosexuality folks, they were over the moon. Look at this press release from a pray away the gay group called NARTH, the National Association for Research and Therapy of Homosexuality. Their press release, prominent psychiatrist announces new study results. Some gays can change. Ever since this study came out in 2001, 11 years ago, Dr. Robert Spitzer's work has been cited as proof that if you want it enough, you can turn yourself from gay to straight. The Cure the Gay People have spent that last 11 years moving to the center of anti-gay politics in the United States. They have become as mainstream as you can get in the anti-gay political world. When President George W. Bush urged Congress in 2006 to amend the United States Constitution to make it anti-gay marriage, the Bush White House made sure that a contingent of people who specialize in supposedly curing gay people were in attendance at the White House announcement. This is a press release from Exodus International, one of the big ex-gay Cure the Gay groups. Quote, worldwide network of former homosexuals to take part in Rose Garden ceremony as Bush endorses marriage protection amendment. Quote, the lives of thousands of former homosexuals like me verify that homosexuality is not an immutable trait. Therefore, marriage is not a civil right to be casually granted to any group who demands it. So says Alan Chambers, president of Exodus International. You recognize the guy there on the right? That is Karl Rove uh, with the then vice president of Exodus International in a photo taken at the White House. The cure the gay people at the White House. 
This year, presidential candidate Michelle Bachman's husband uh, runs a counseling center in Minnesota that is reported to have tried to change patient, patients' sexual orientation. Marcus Bachman denies that that's a service that he offers, but frankly, it is rather convincingly reported in the nation and elsewhere. Also, remember the weird speech that Rick Perry gave during the campaign where he hugged that syrup bottle and everybody wondered if there wasn't something a little off about Rick Perry that night? Uh, that was a speech before a group called Cornerstone in New Hampshire, an anti-gay group in New Hampshire. Their research page of helpful links on the issue of homosexuality lists exactly four helpful links on homosexuality. Four helpful organizations, all of which are organizations that claim to be able to cure gay people, to be able to cure people of having the affliction known as the gay. The presumptive Republican nominee this year, Mitt Romney, his anti-gay politics are also now homosexuality can be cured politics. Uh, we reported on this on this show a while back. And the Romney's charity with the Romney's money supports a lot of conservative causes that the Romney's support. CNN did a report on this the other day, finding out that uh, this foundation has supported like pro-gun groups and the conservative think tank at Stanford and some medical stuff. But they also support, to the tune of $10,000 in one year alone, uh, a group called the Massachusetts Family Institute. The Massachusetts Family Institute is an anti-gay group based uh, in Boston, Massachusetts, that advocates all sorts of anti-gay causes. And that explains that if anybody is gay, well, you should quit that. Quote, we encourage the healing of individuals who wish to change their choice of lifestyle through the work of Exodus International, Love One Out, and parents and friends of ex-gays and gays. And how do these recommended groups from the Romney-funded organization propose that you do that? They promote magic therapy by which you can be cured of your affliction, like our old friend Richard Cohen advertised. Another technique, bioenergetics, designed to help clients release memories stored in the muscles, in this case by hitting a pillow with a tennis racket. I was angry at my mother, okay. so I started saying, Mom! 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 Why did you do that to me? What Mitt Romney has been funding as charity is actually advocacy of the predatory quack industry that sells parents on the idea that you can ship off your gay son to a guy like this and he'll ship him back to you straight. It was not an oversight that Mitt Romney's charity gave money to one of these pseudo-scientific cure the gay groups. It was not an accident because this is what anti-gay politics are like now. They, they have the you can be cured of the gay message right at the heart of what they do in politics. It has been like that since the bombshell Robert Spitzer study mainstreamed this kind of thinking back in 2001. It has been that way for 11 years now. It has been that way for 11 years until last week when all of a sudden it stopped being like that. Because last week, Dr. Robert Spitzer made it known that he would please like to take that study back from 2001. He would like to retract it. It does not mean what people think it means, and he wishes it had not been published. Last week, the American Prospect magazine published a remarkable piece of reporting, including the explosive revelation that Dr. Spitzer is renouncing this 2001 study that changed gay politics in America ever since. Dr. Spitzer says he wishes he could retract the study from the journal in which it was originally published. He says that efforts to cure gay people of homosexuality, quote, can be quite harmful. Acknowledging that he did not study a representative sample of people, but instead counted on people sent to him from anti-gay groups, Dr. Spitzer now says, quote, the findings can be considered evidence for what those who have undergone ex-gay therapy say about it, but nothing more. Dr. Spitzer essentially saying that study was not science. It was just a series of anecdotes. He's sorry it was published. He wants to take it back. So what does this do to all the cure the gay people? Do they go back to being seen as quacks? Or do Republicans keep inviting them to the White House and speaking before them as presidential candidates? What happens next? Well, the first thing that happens next is the interview on this subject. Back in a second. I come from a state, you know, where um, they had this little place called the Alamo and they declared victory or death. You know, we're kind of into those slogans, man. It's like <laughs> live free or die, victory or death. Bring it. <laughs> Obviously, there were a number of problems with that Rick Perry speech on the Republican presidential campaign trail last fall, none of which I need to explain to you. It's as plain as the nose on your face or as plain as the bottle of syrup in the governor's tender embrace at the end of the speech when he just left to be alone with the syrup. 
<clears throat> but one of the more subtle between the lines problems uh, with that speech is that it was delivered before an anti-gay group in New Hampshire that, like many anti-gay groups now, bases its anti-gay political arguments around a core pseudo-medical argument that being gay is a curable thing, that you can change your sexual orientation if you work on it. The core mainstream scientific justification for that argument has just been blown up by reporting from our next guest. Gabriel Arana is a reporter and web editor at The American Prospect. He's the new author of their new bombshell, My So-Called Ex-Gay Life. Uh, Mr. Arana, thanks very much for being here. It's nice to have you here. Thanks for having me. Uh, your story in The American Prospect included uh, this revelation that Dr. Robert Spitzer wants to retract his famous 2001 study that supposedly proved that gay people can be cured of homosexuality if they want it enough. When, when you set out to write this story, did you know that was going to happen? Were you surprised by this revelation from Dr. Spitzer? Um, I really didn't know it was going to happen. Um, I went to visit him at his home in Princeton, um, and I wanted to speak with him more generally about um, his place in the history of psychiatry. Uh, as you mentioned um, before the commercial break, um, he spearheaded the effort to declassify homosexuality as a mental illness uh, in 1973 and, uh, and then in 2001 dropped this um, bombshell um, that was very, da uh, very damaging to a lot of people. Um, and so he's obviously uh, an iconoclast and I was curious about um, both his role in the, in the 1973 uh, declassification of homosexuality and then what led him to undertake the 2001 study. Um, and then as we spoke, um, he started to, re to express regret for both having conducted his study and also how it had been used by the ex-gay movement. So it was both about um, seeing the impact of how his study was used in the real world but also some regret about the scientific basis of his findings? That's right. Um, after his study was published, uh, he endured um, a barrage of criticism from uh, his colleagues in the psychiatric and psychological communities, as well as from, from the gay rights movement. Um, the most um, noteworthy of the criticisms was that he had recruited participants for his studies from uh, ex-gay organizations um, and then relied on these self-reports um, from patients of ex-gay therapists um, to conclude that change for at least a highly motivated uh, group of uh, gay people was uh, possible. Um, and in the intervening 11 years, he started to doubt um, the credibility of these people. Um, and strangely enough, I was uh, originally referred to his study as a, as a success story, um, and now I'm married to a man, so um, <laughs> you can see how that went. Well, part of the reason uh, this piece of yours in the American Prospect was so powerful is because of the personal story that you bring to it. I mean, your parents encouraged you uh, to seek therapy, to try to become straight. Your therapist at the time was the head of one of these You Can Be Cured of Homosexuality organizations. You write really beautifully about uh, why you agreed to the therapy, this person telling you you could make your parents happy, you could be normal. When you were undergoing that, that therapy, did you ever feel like it was working? So um, I can answer that question in two parts. Um, if the question is, did I ever feel that my sexual orientation was changing, uh, the answer is no. Um, so the way therapy works is that you're encouraged to view your sexuality as the result of gender misidentification. So in the case of gay men, uh, in my case, I was not close enough with my father and too close with my mother. Um, and you learn to interpret both your childhood, um, your past experiences uh, through that lens and then talk about how that initial childhood trauma um, has a bearing on your, your life now. Um, so I felt, that, I felt that I was understanding myself uh, given this frame. Um, but, you know, obviously I wasn't coming to any true understanding. Uh, it's just I sort of learned to speak the language. Well, the combination of your personal story and 
um, this revelation that you elicit uh, from this doctor who has played such a key role, I think in the whole, forgive the phrase, reorientation of anti-gay politics in America um, is, it, A, it's a remarkable piece of reporting, but B, I think that it's sort of step one in what we're now going to see is a real change, a real reckoning um, in anti-gay politics. So congratulations on, on this as a scoop, Gabriel Arana, um, and thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right. If you want to learn more about uh, the original study and the retraction of the study and what might happen next, we've got some supporting materials about this uh, posted at mattoblog.com. All right. Uh,